the problem is, is that there is always this question of like, is, you know, if I'm writing to that, like that pressure crushes me every time. Like I don't write because of that dream. Welcome to the Young Eager Writers podcast. My name is Desiree Brown. This is my co-host, Michael Evans. <laughs> super excited to be here with everyone. Yeah, this is this is fun. I'm super excited that we're bringing this back because this is a podcast we did, I think, right at the beginning of COVID of 2020. We, we yeah. got together and um, it was super sad. We I was just talking about our very first podcast recording together when Allie and I went to visit you in Charleston and we actually did it like live. That was that was so cool to like actually be there in person, like connect with each other. Yeah, that was super cool. I remember my dog Sky was there. She was very, very excited to have visitors. She always is. And we were able to tour the city, talk about young and good writers, uh, kind of breaking down everything for the conference that was about a half a year away. But uh, it, it feels like you kind of hit conference season fall into spring in terms of prepping for it, which I suppose if if you all don't know what Younger Writers is, I can let Desiree fully dive into because part of her origin story is this awesome organization. But we do host conferences that are part of just our larger mission to help young writers really build sustainable careers and explore their passions and connect with other people that love storytelling just like them a, bu a bunch of weirdos but good weirdos because we're all we're all just little geeks who love <laughs> uh love the little things that we create at our core um and yeah. i guess we're here to tell you that like this is your safe place this is a place where you can explore your imagination and know that we're here to support you and it's hard it's hard but it's also really fun and mm -hmm. for all the challenges we hope we can make it easier yeah. Yeah. You know what? I think we should get in before we get into like our separate origin stories. Um, I think we should definitely talk about like how we connected and, and how this came to be. So I was planning the very first Young Eager Writers Conference. And I remember my mom <laughs> reached out to me and was like, there is this young writer. He's like this young kid. He's coming to Charlotte, North Carolina. I think he's he was doing a book tour. Um, you should like connect with him or go up and meet him or talk to him or something. And I was like, yeah, I could do that. I remember being nervous actually, because I, I was like, I, I don't know how to like reach out to people yet. Like I've just started this. And so I connected with Michael and I really wanted him to be a guest speaker. And like he started off our whole conference. He was the very first presentation that I wanted because I wanted people to walk in and see a young writer like themselves. And you were like 16 at the time, right? 15, 16? Yeah. I think I had just turned 16. Yeah. A yeah. Long time I know <laughs> you were, you were a baby back then. I was a baby back then. And then, yeah, you spoke at the first conference. You were awesome. And I remember you coming up to me. I don't know if it was right after the conference or a little bit after, and you were just like, can I, can we like keep like participating and do like, can, can I help with this? Can we just grow this together? <laughs> yeah, that's totally it. I remember being there and it was, it was super interesting because I, for years prior, had been very serious about writing. And I think like looking into any sort of conference was something I was interested in, but I was kind of at the age where I felt like, well, I don't want to go to a conference with a bunch of like, you know, real adults. I'm not a real adult yet. So I don't want to have to go and be around a bunch of like, and since I've been to writers conferences and, and no shade on anyone who's like, writing's beautiful. You can write at any time of your life. But a lot of people who are probably like two or three generations away from like my life experiences, my age, everything. And again, nothing wrong with that. I think things beautiful. But it was intimidating and also something that I like, didn't really want to spend the money experiencing because like, as people might know, like conferences you have to travel to, and even if it's virtually, you have to spend time doing it. 
and there's nothing wrong with that, but it's like an investment. And I was like, eh, maybe not, but <laughs> I was like super honored and also like kind of like every writer feeling a little imposter. I'm like, what I'm speaking here. Okay. But I was super, super thankful for the opportunity. It was one of like the coolest things. I was like, what? I've always wanted to speak somewhere. And like, this is like the coolest place I can imagine speaking. And after going, I just kind of felt the energy Yeah. and was like, there's something here. Uh, because I kind of like immediately when you were talking about building something for young writers, I was able to like imagine a vision in my mind, but I'm like, yeah, let's just go there. Let's like see how Desiree is as a person. Let's see how this is executed because I think she's onto something. And and then we went and I'm like, oh, she definitely is. This is really, really cool. And this is something I wish I had because if I knew that like this existed, um, it would have made my life a lot easier like a couple of years ago. Um, and now like four and a half years later, which is kind of crazy, but it's been like almost four and a half years at this point. I, I feel even more strongly about that as I've kind of progressed in my writer journey, which doesn't always feel like progression. It sometimes feels like sneaking, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, that's exactly the reason I built it was because I was having those same experiences at writing conferences. I was learning so much, but I was the youngest by 30 years. I I tell that to everybody who asks me why I started this organization. Um, it was it was fine. I liked going, but it was lonely. It was very, very lonely. And I would come across like once in a while another young writer and they they had that same kind of lonely expression on their face. I just felt so bad. I was like, we have to do something about this. Like we have to have a place where we can all come together and have a conference that you know, is a little bit more suited for what we're going through in life. Things like, how do you balance writing and high school? You know, college and high school. Um, what about uh, MFA programs and all these things that we have questions about, we want to know about. I think that was something that had just been on my mind for years as a young writer. I really wanted to create that space. So, oh, I also, what I want to say, because young writer is such a vague term. I think I, I like before we really get into talking about ourselves and our origin story, I need to establish that this podcast, this organization, this is for young writers of all ages. I just turned 25 <laughs> and I still consider myself a young writer. I think if you're really I mean all the way up through your you know late 20s you might still consider yourself a young writer i think if you're as young as you know 13 12 like if you can get something out of this podcast it's for you so i don't want people to shy away from young writer it's just you know we don't say words like a teen or young adult because we want to appeal to so many different writers so so, yeah, yeah. I, I totally agree. I think as well, like this podcast specifically, although we might be speaking to like more of, let's just say a Gen Z-ish, Gen, you know, younger millennials, older Gen Alpha. Yeah, that's what's after Gen Z. So weird. <laughs> um, which that which, might be like... <laughs> It I makes know. me so <laughs> mad that they get to be named like Gen Alpha. Like... I'm like, really? You have to like one up everyone? Like, <laughs> no, I, I feel bad because I feel like that generation and no shade if like any of y'all are listening. No, I'm Gen Z, so I'm automatically like, we've got something up on you. What we do is like, we like all were handed phones and we're like maybe like seven or eight on average, 10 mm -hmm. years old. We weren't like in the womb with a phone. And I, I think that might actually be like toxic. So all I have to say is like, Gen Alpha might be like, gen like gen alpha toxic because like a lot of alpha males are toxic <laughs> um, but that's like totally totally off topic but we can connect everything back to fiction which is that there's people who write like you know young adult romances and other romances involving alpha figures so everything can exist in fiction <laughs> that's something i've learned and another thing i've learned on the note that you were talking about desiree is that you know I think that young writer is something that I think we all feel at times. We all feel inexperienced in certain areas. So especially for this podcast, no matter where you're at in your life, I think that 
if you are beginning the writer journey, like we're not going to be talking here too much about like what happens after you get your million dollar publishing deal. Like mm -hmm. safe to say, even if you're 15 and that happens, like, you know, you're maybe a bit beyond who we're speaking to, but who we are speaking to is people who are like, have this passion and are wanting to explore it and find a community and who maybe even struggling with it all like mental health is such a complex basket of huge conversations that aren't really touched much we want to dive into that whole laundry list of things and you could be literally any age and i think benefit a lot from that yeah yeah very much so and and one of the things too i mean actually to give some some credit to gen alpha is that they, they are going to be so comfortable or, or are so comfortable with technology where um Gen Z, I'm a cusper, technically. People say that I'm a millennial. I feel very much on the edge. Um, I think technically I'm Gen Z. But anyway, I I feel like one of the things that I see very um, frequently is the way that Gen Z very successfully is learning how to use today's technology to become popular well-established writers and that's something that gen alpha might when they get to the age where they're like writing novels they might have that down like, <laughs> but yeah. i think that's something too that we can definitely talk about is like how do we use like we are in a way this unique generation of writers um where the industry looks very different nowadays so yeah we we could talk about this forever like i i know the tangents part of this podcast is definitely going to be me um so let me take responsibility now and let's start some origin stories i'll let you go first michael because i always love listening to um you talk about how you got started and how you got to where you are today well i think we will bounce back and forth. I won't share my whole origin story at once because I don't feel like a rat. And also, I have plenty of tangents myself. So it's kind of like when you're writing and it's like, well, this character like made this really weird observation about like the mountain. And you kind of want to describe it for a minute, but it doesn't really have to do with the story. And your reader probably reads it and is like, I don't quite see it, but cool. And you're like, I should probably take it out. Your editor's like, you need to take it out. But you're like, we're going to keep it in. We're going to keep it in. So we all do these things. It's part of being a writer. But my story of how I got started is both, I think, very normal, but also like every writer, um, extraordinary because we're all heroes. No, no, no. But seriously, I think that every writer and most people that exist have this internal pull that's hard to explain towards stories and it's something that i had at a very young age and like we had a reading contest in school and i was like combining books and a competition absolutely <laughs> lethal for every other hobby in my life but but great and i think i read 400 books that competition it was like it was a little toxic right because you have to like <laughs> you can't read every second of your day you know there's limits but I was a huge reader and then in elementary school towards the end of it there was like the spelling bee so as you can see there's maybe a thing here i'm very competitive but i also tend to pick certain competitions so spelling bee was like competing over words and i just have always had a thing for words so yeah i made my mom practice me like three hours a night for like months and months straight as we were going you know up to the different competitions and I was from Long Island and Long Island is like a very diverse place. So when I was competing, like I was like, like very much like the only person who looked like me on stage, which was very cool, but it was also like very different because like, I, you know, that's like, it was kind of funny. It was like, look who was up there. This like high pitched voice, like, like little like twerp because everyone was a couple years older than me. Um, but <laughs> That was like the beginning of like me realizing, okay, I like words, I like stories, but I was actually nervous to say that I was like writing, you know, or that I wanted to be a writer. It felt like out of reach. It's not like a career that like your mom says like, oh yeah, like go do that. Funnily enough, I feel like more parents encourage their kids to be astronauts, especially nowadays with things like SpaceX and, and all of that. 
it, it just, that feels somehow going to another planet feels more achievable than writing and making a living from creating stories. And mm -hmm. that's first of all, not true, but it's definitely, there's a conception of that. I think the the starving artist notion has really changed over the last couple of years. I think it will continue to change. But when I was growing up, this is how it was. So I didn't really think about it, about being a writer. But I would write in this thing that I called a journal because diary was what girls had. Boys had journals. And it, it was supposed to be like my thoughts, but it really wasn't. They ended up just being short stories. And what they really were, and I didn't know what they were at the time because I didn't have the internet to see what other people were doing. I was like still that young where like my, my parents didn't like give me a computer. So I was writing fan fiction about the books I was reading and I didn't even know what fan fiction was. So I just kind of thought like, here's my own spinoff. This is what I wanted to happen kind of deal. And that is how I got my start as a writer. Now the story goes in many different directions from there, but I want to pass it back on to Desiree to share her inciting incident in the origin story of the writer life. I love that you called it a journal instead of a diary because I did the same thing for the same reasons. I was like, a diary is too girly. I just have a journal. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, I was writing fan fiction in mine. Like, like oh, it was so manly. <laughs> you know what, though? Like, fan fiction, yeah. I feel insecure using this word because. I use Gen Z words because my sisters do, but fan fiction slaps. It really does. Uh, it's the way. It's the way to go. I know so many people who got into writing through fan fiction. I've only done one myself, and it was a superhero story that it was a gift to my sister, and it was so much fun. I was like, "Can I post this somewhere? Like, I need other people to read this." So, yeah, fan fiction. We'll have to do an episode on on fan fiction because I'm I'm so fascinated by it. So, yeah, my origin story. So I feel like I give the same spiel. Um, I wonder if there's a way to like. I don't know. I know a lot of people have heard this, but but the way that I mean, I I started writing pretty young. I was like six. And I remember that it started with songs. I still, to this day, write songs. I wrote a song yesterday. like, And I don't mean like musically. I cannot play a single instrument. But I I love lyrics. Um, and I can usually, you know, hear melodies in my head. And I can hear, you know, kind of what I want to piece together. I just don't have any of the skills to do it. So I used to write songs. I remember swinging on the swing and like repeating words over and over repeating lines until I had a full song and then going in my journal and writing it down. Um, and I remember one, it's funny because my, my father works in like the recording business. He owns a media company. And so um, I remember I came up with a song and he's like, we should record it. And I remember being so nervous. I was like, what? I'm like, you're going to record it. But I eventually, you know, I, I really loved the poetic part of it, the rhyming. And so I wrote poems as well. And then that kind of developed and I started to write stories. I, I feel in my heart, I'm a poet. I love fiction, but poetry is just where I, where I live, what I love to do. But I remember at some point, I think early teen, like maybe I was like 11, 12 ish. I recorded myself singing and I feel like I could hear my heartbreak when I found out I couldn't sing. And I was like, oh my god like I wanted to be I didn't want to necessarily be like this pop star but I definitely wanted to like sing songs and write I wanted to be Taylor Swift I was like I'm gonna do that one day and yep so it didn't it, and it's okay because I I realized the singing part of it isn't really what I loved anyway I mean it was the writing aspect um and a lot of the artists that I like they are songwriters. So yeah, so so that's kind of how everything happened and unfolded. I mean, I'm in the same boat where I could talk about the whole story after that um, and how I got here. But I think when talking about origin story, that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's really what happens. I, I have to throw a random question toward you, Michael, just because I yeah. feel vulnerable and exposed. Um, what is something that you thought you were really good at and then you discovered you were not good at? 
please, please do this for my own ego. <laughs> That's a good question. You know, I want to, I want to frame, like flip that out of his head. Cause I think a lot of people listening are going to be like writing for me, <laughs> you know? And, and I think that like, maybe my first instinct was that for me too. Um, like, you want to be a writer, but the first thought is I'm not good enough. Therefore, mm -hmm. let me not try. And I think that there's some things that make it easier when you have talent, like no doubt, like if you're a basketball player and you're like six, five, like you're, you're probably have it easier than someone who's four ten, like probably, but, <laughs> and there's things like that in the writing world for sure. But I was just listening to a podcast today. It's a history podcast because I'm, I just kind of like learning about a bunch of random things whenever. So this guy was talking about why people were better writers 300 years ago. The average mm. education was like third grade. They didn't have access to any of the materials education that we had to do now just for free on the internet. Yet the average person wrote better and more entertaining and more clear and thoughtful than the average mm -hmm. person today. Like when you read people's journals and things like that. And that is like a super interesting insight. I'm like, huh? And what they did was copy. That's what they were really good at. Finding good writers that they liked at the time and shamelessly copying them for their own mm -hmm. story. And this is that now this sounds like so weird like i'm just telling you to plagiarize but i'm not what i'm telling you is that everyone reads like here i hope you've read a book i hope you've experienced a story in your life like watched a movie and we as humans have evolved to do this thing because it's good for us it promotes survival brings people together this is as much of it as it's an art it's a skill and art is skill too. It, it, it's something you can build. And, you know, we can go into hero's journey. We could go into all these act structures, frameworks that people have tried to use to break down this mysterious story thing. No one really has a formula, but there are people who've written really good stories and all of their secrets are out in the open in the story, right? Like all of that secret sauce happened in words. There's not anything beyond the words that exists in a book, right? In TV, it's like, oh, well, how did they do that special effect? You know what they did in writing. They literally wrote it right there for you. So it's something that about writing that actually, for me, I think this is something I struggled with even very recently. Like, well, I'm not a good writer. Um, you know, something it felt, I didn't feel good enough at what I wanted to do here. Um, but when you really think about it, you can get really, really good at writing. And a lot of it just comes from practice. And I think that at most things that I've wanted to do, mainly just out of being stubborn, I've always just practiced and worked really, really hard and eventually gotten okay enough at it. And I think that I haven't decided to be an NBA player, so I couldn't give you that answer. But there's definitely some things that are harder to do without certain special skills but writing is not one of them. We're all born as storytellers and we can all tell a story. This is what we're made to do. Our minds are meaning making machines in that way, but yeah. it does take practice. Yeah, I, I very much, I mean, I, I agree with it. So I, I would definitely, I'm hesitant to agree with the, the thought or the notion that people were better writers like whatever many years ago um because I just I mean I have certain thoughts about like I mean I don't know there's so much content nowadays so maybe on the regular it seems like we don't so so I don't know but I I do absolutely love this notion that anyone can be a writer and I think I mean all of us are like you said naturally storytellers um it's something that we love to do and I think one of the things too I I mean, this is a good segue, actually. We'll segue after this into, like, our writing advice for – or just our advice in general for young writers. But I think one thing to remember is that 
okay, so this is gonna be this is gonna be a thought that is not very common in in the writing industry, um, but it's something that I do believe. You don't have to read all of the classics and everything to like write this magnificent story. Now, here's where I get my inspiration. Honestly, it's when I'm reading stuff that I actually enjoy and I'm reading it with a critical eye. You know, some of this stuff, so I was homeschooled. It's kind of also part of my origin story. Um, So I got to choose a lot of the literature that I read, which is phenomenal, um, but I still had my required stuff. And a lot of the times, like, I mean, I was not at a place where I could connect with the work. I I was just doing it because I was told. So I just want people to know that, you know, when, when, yes, absolutely, like, read, but read what you like. Don't, if you're forcing yourself to read certain things, I don't know how inspiring that's going to be. And as writers, we, I don't, I feel this pressure to read, like, I gotta read at least 50 pages a day. And like, sometimes I don't always have the time or want to do that. Um, But when you pick up that book that you're just captivated by, you will read over 50 pages a day. And that will inspire you to actually create your own work. So sorry, (laughs) that might not be popular advice. No, I, I, I love the insight and, you know, I'll tell you a secret about myself and then I'll tell you a secret anecdotally from a few writers and notch their names. But for me personally, I actually don't read that much. Um, I read like fiction very little. Um, Since I've started writing seriously, which I really started to like become a novelist and really start writing and publishing about like five and a half years ago now. So I have not read more than 20 fiction books in that span of time since I started writing. Definitely mm-hmm. not. Um, and I've seen thousands. I've like seen endless descriptions, endless covers. I kind of study it, but I don't have that much time to actually read over writing. And for me, I actually don't really garner my inspiration from fiction. So a lot of people do. A lot of writers like are super inspired by fiction. And, you know, there's some romance authors I know that read a hundred romance books a year. And like, that's how they get their next novel. And that's not it for me. For me, it's more reading nonfiction. It's traveling and talking to people. It's Mm -hmm. learning about science, learning about politics. And that's like what's going into the world building. That's what's going into the characters. So fiction's like never actually been a source of inspiration for me. What what got my first novel ideas was YouTube, like John Green, mm. Pink Green on YouTube. So they're so funny. <laughs> in the way that I communicate, it's what I love to do. I think it's like a great way to tell a story. But the stories that I'm learning from aren't typically fictional stories. They're typically either fiction in different mediums or different nonfiction, other things. And I know a few writers, one, um, is around our age and, um, made a full-time living after doing well in Wattpad and she rarely reads, rarely, rarely reads. Um, but she has a great readership and people like her. And then I know an author who literally makes seven figures a year, which we shouldn't glorify, you know, book sales aren't don't mean that you're a better writer but he's a successful writer and he certainly has people who enjoy his work and he never read his entire life he never read but he Mm -hmm. wanted to be a writer so he started writing um and he writes fiction too um Mm -hmm. so these are just examples but yeah you don't have to read all the classics yeah yeah and i think like (laughs) You know, there are parts of the writing industry that can be very, um, <laughs> how do I say this nicely, stuck up, I guess, um, where it is kind of like a, oh, you don't read. And let me tell you, it's not that I don't read. I mean, but I'm in the same boat, Michael. It's like, how if I look at how many books I've even finished, like, it's such a low amount. It's, it's insane. But 
you're in college. I had been in college. I'm, you know, sometimes you have to choose between writing and reading. And, and here's what I'll say is just like you, I don't always get my inspiration from reading. I get my inspiration from experiencing. So sometimes I'll have like this interaction. If I'm like in the elevator and somebody says something to me, if they say, you know, or like that moment where somebody goes, enjoy your food and you say you too. And then you're like, oh my God, like those are the things I write about. Um, that inspires me and movies a lot of the time inspire me and in character development um, within that. You know, I use writing though to learn how to write well and how to edit my work. Um, but that's not always the inspiration. So I think that's something important to know that if you want to go in and you want to write this phenomenal book, definitely read phenomenal work, but read work that's going to be like yours and read work that you actually, you know, enjoy, but, but know that your inspiration doesn't have to always come from that. Like, yeah. Okay. I, I want to, cause I, again, I could talk about this forever. I want to push us along. Let's give, uh, um, and by the way, this is going to kind of be our closing statement. I think every time we're going to answer the question of what advice would you give to young writers? So go ahead, Michael, what advice given kind of what we talked about, would you give young writers? Yeah, I think, you know, when we talk about maybe forming your own origin stories, you could look back and be like, you know, this is my journey over the last couple of years. And, and this is where it began. You might be at that point where it's like, I haven't quite begun yet. We're still begunning. We're still begunning, <laughs> which is totally cool. It happens for everyone at points. And I think that the biggest thing is one, taking the leap. Why am I making a list? That is the biggest thing. So you should really focus on why you want to write, what's driving you to do this and make sure that like what's grounding you is the, the quote unquote right reasons. There is no right reason, but you want to make sure what's pushing you towards writing is aligned with your morals and who you are as a person. Mm. And I'll, I'll give an example. There's a lot of people who like the idea of being able to travel, being able to, you know, not, not be a celebrity, but live life like a celebrity in a sense, because you get to have people adore your work, but you're not having paparazzi chase you. You get to be on the New York Times bestseller list. You get to sell a lot of books, maybe make a lot of money. All those things. Like the lifestyle of being a writer is attractive to a lot of people, no matter what your morals or values are. And I think me and Desiree would be lying if like, oh, that's not a job. Like, oh, would you would you deny that lifestyle if, if someone handed you that? Would you, would you be like, not for me? No. Yeah. No, and is that something that... And is that something that makes writing interesting? Yeah, like I don't have to show up to an office every day, right? Mm -hmm. Like I can work in my underwear. I can work in a suit. No one cares. I can, I kind of don't have much rules, right? You can kind of do whatever you want. But a lot of these things you end up realizing are completely not true once you actually dive into it. The mm -hmm. first notion of like, you can do what you want kind of thing. No, you actually can't because, and it sounds weird, but when you build a brand as an author, you are somewhat chained by that brand in the sense of like, there's some and very few authors that have jumped between, hi, I'm writing fantasy. Hi, I'm now writing, you know, contemporary or historical fiction. People do it, but then there's probably something else in their stories that's very core to it, that's bringing their readers along with them. And you're probably not going to be able to escape a nine to five job if you aren't able to have a core base of readers, and it doesn't need to be New York Times bestseller reader numbers, but it needs to be some, and you need to bring them along with you, or you're always going to constantly be fighting to like find new readers, and that's super super difficult. So that would be like my one thing for you, like like to remember, like if it's the lifestyle of writing, which is why you want to get into it, um, totally respect that, totally, but maybe that's what's actually held you back from taking the leap. But if it's not something like that, you like really want to write 
you understand that like some things are hard but to be honest like you might not want to make it a career like you might like, that'd be cool but that might not be like at all what's in your thing like you just have a story you want to tell you actually find writing as a way to process something that happened in your life for me um growing up my parents were divorced my dad was an addict writing became a huge escape for me as i got older and that's why i began writing if the if that's why you want to be a writer like like write it down and then be like holy this is important this is really important because this isn't like some far off dream that my parents tell me I'll never have cuz the odds are you probably won't have that new york times best selling dream you might you might and it's all possible but like like you know that's not tangible and it's like 10 years away and it's not very motivating to take the leap. It feels so scary and dark. But what doesn't feel scary and dark is like, oh my God, if I just sit down for 15 minutes and write, it's going to make me feel really good because X. We all have different reasons for it. And I think if you ground yourself in that why, then you you have to like put it on a wall, put it on a post or something, write it down and just never let that leave you. Like you are now like held accountable to that because you are worth that, whatever that is to you, whatever that reason why is because it's something that you can control, right? You want to make friends and writing is a way that you can actually make like connections to the world and, and have your voice be heard. Like that is immensely powerful. So write that down and stick to it. And I think that everything else gets really easier after that. And I think so much writers who have quote unquote made it, who are writers actually have never done that. And then ultimately writing like you're always writing for that core reason even if you don't realize it but then you start to write for other reasons too like oh wait actually writing does pay my bills now i have a deadline i have a peer group that i'm giving this feedback to that i'm due ten thousand words next month in my writers group like there's other pressures that come into it and then is that why you're writing it shouldn't be but if you're not aware of that core reason you can let other things take over and then writing doesn't become a magical dream, doesn't become very fun. It just becomes another job that fictional characters are your boss. And they're sometimes not nice to the real boss. So that's like my long rant and advice. <laughs> yeah, I think, I mean, I think that's important even for me to hear because I think my problem is that that dream of being this famous writer who just like you said like gets to enjoy all the perks but then also can just like not be famous and you know <laughs> like people won't recognize me on the street you know but the problem is is that there is always this question of like is you know if i'm writing to that like that pressure crushes me every time like i don't write because of that dream which is so counterproductive but yeah when I get to that point where I'm like, oh, wait a minute, I'm writing because I love it. It's because I need this self-expression in my life. Like that's when I create art. And so I think that's important for, for people to know, like if, if, if you're writing or you do feel that pressure to create these magnificent things and this pressure to produce in this, you know, capitalist society, um, question that, think about that for a minute and, really make sure that the reason that you're writing doesn't just weigh on you. It actually should lift you up. Um, I have, I have some advice that I just now, I feel like it kind of, I don't know, clicked for me. There are jobs out there. Like <laughs> I just, I just feel like I need to say that there are jobs out there for writers. I know maybe your parents, you know, maybe other people in your life have told you you cannot make money. I get it. I it, It's been my fear since knowing I wanted to become a writer, which I told you guys is like seven years old. I have had the fear that I was going to be broke my whole life and just never, I didn't grow up with money where I had a, actually I had a weird financial situation, but my everyday life, I did not have a lot of money. And so it was really difficult growing up and so I had that fear and I was like oh my god but yeah. but I'm discovering like there are jobs that you would never even think of things that people don't advertise and you actually have to search for them um I always go you know kind of once or twice a month um poetsandwriters.org 
they have a whole list, it, a whole place where this just jobs for writers. And, you know, even if you're not applying to those specific ones, there's a lot of teaching positions. I'm an English professor. And so I look there for different jobs. But, you know, I found one today, or I'm sorry, I, found, I applied to one um, yesterday and just heard back. But I um, applied to one a few weeks ago that was an organization uh, that provides feedback to young writers who are applying to colleges. And so like well-paid, something I already love to do, something I do with my young writers through this organization, like did not know that was an option, you know? And even um, the interns that work for me and the staff that works for me, they had no clue that this was something they could do. They're like, I could come in and run workshops. I could come in and, and um, you know, run uh, this Instagram account and connect with writers, or I could, um, you know, have these writing groups. There are so many opportunities. You just have to look for them, you know? So I just don't want people to get discouraged. Like you can absolutely have a job that serves your writing life. You don't have to necessarily be a full-time writer. I don't even think I want to. I don't know if I could sit in my pajamas all day and write stories. Like, I'm realizing that about myself, but what I could do is I could go out and help other young writers and that actually ends up serving my own joy to write. And then I end up writing these poems. So, so anyway, keep your eyes out. There are jobs. Sometimes you just have to, you have to dig to find them, but they're out there. That's beautiful. I love it. And <laughs> like the snap. I've definitely come to similar conclusions about myself. Um, you know, and just, do I want to actually be a full-time writer? And my answer would be no, but I do want to be a 21st century storyteller. And maybe we'll do like a whole podcast episode on jobs and interesting opportunities. Um, cause I feel like, I feel a big tangent there that I'm like, <laughs> is not a tangent. It's a whole other episode, Yeah, <laughs> but I think that maybe is a good sign that for this first episode, this is the end. Uh, I, I'll let Desiree close it out. Yeah. Um, so I just want to make sure everybody knows kind of where we're coming from and how to connect with us. Um, so we have a website, which is where, so we'll be on YouTube, on Spotify. I don't know if you guys are watching or listening to us, but you can find all of our episodes at youngeagerwriters.org. That's also where you can find our programs. You can find things like our writing group, our book club, um, our upcoming workshops, and definitely information about our conference, which we don't have anything up yet, um, but it's in the works. So hopefully I'll have some stuff up soon. But thank you for hanging out with us. I wish you all well. I will see you next time and happy writing. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.